we are 8% complete with the game already. And this comes after me just doing three events to open up the bronze events. Now, before we get on with our next line of events, I'm convinced in saying we're going to need some more upgrades. So I'm going to start off by putting on a tuning kit for the engine. We will get refurbished pistons, refurbished pistons, a camshaft, and a crankshaft, and it's also guaranteed to be rust-free. So I'm going to buy that, because I can. And... I'm also going to see what else there is, in terms of power output. I'll put on the carburetor and manifold, just to give a little more power to the engine. And... Yeah, I'll put this on as well, just to uh, give me a further increase. So, putting on a clutch, also putting on a flywheel, and... Also going to put on a new transmission, because I can afford it. New exhaust. New suspension, because that also works. And a new set of tyres. And we will also put on... Not one, but two body upgrades. And... I think all I really need to do after that is... Ooh. I'm just $81 short of another tuning kit. Well, I gotta spend my money on something. Yeah, I'll put it... I'll spend it on the filter. Okay, I think that should be everything we need. And since we also put on body upgrades, I think that should change something on the body as well, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but I think the body upgrades do more or less improve the car's looks on the body. Unless I could be missing something. Oh wait, hold on. I think I just noticed part of a wing there, so I'd assume that's a spoiler. Anyway... Let's now get on with our second section of events, starting with Finchley Trial Run in the Grinder. As we are now doing part two of the Bronze Events. Yep, there is a wing on the back of this car, just as I thought. And I can definitely say the car sounds different compared to what it did before, but then again, that is because I have fitted more upgrades to this thing, and I've also given it a little more acceleration as well, because I figured that would also be helpful. And running in second at the moment, but hopefully these new upgrades will help me out in terms of getting to the front. And I am closing in on the leader. I have not lost him yet. I think it is another grinder that is leading the field here. And yes, it is another grinder at the front. I can't tell what number that is, but I think that number is 22. On the side of the car there, but yep, it is another grinder, and my car is, or was, on its roof. And that was definitely a big one in terms of the accident, because at least three of us were involved 
when I came into contact with the logs. And then basically, just like that. I wound up resetting my car as the leader. Because the other two guys basically wrecked harder than I did. And that was the main reason why I came away with the lead. As I give myself a bonus measure, and this time we now have a Papa that is running in second. But I don't think he's going to be holding on to second for very long because I've noticed the blockhead is behind him, I think. Oh, crap, crap, okay. I really thought for sure I was going to go head on into those logs, but thankfully I did not. And I almost hit that ladder, but probably didn't matter anyway. I likely wouldn't have taken down the bridge. And whoever those two guys were that wrecked me or tried to wreck me back there at that pile of logs. They are now well behind the rest of the field. And I mean way behind the rest of us. I think it's fair to say, in terms of competition, that one big accident we had with that log pile, it definitely turned this race on its head. Okay. Yeah, I think that I think that's the blockhead that's right alongside me. As we're duking it out for the win. I get caught out by a gutter. But it's okay for me because the opponent who was alongside me basically got forced into a tree after I clicked that gutter. Unless it was a ditch. It might have been a ditch. But either way, doesn't matter because I come off the final corner, up the front stretch, and I win in the grinder and it's a grinder 1-2 as Frank finished in second then we had Seth Ballinger in the pepper rounding off the podium Sue finished fourth in the blockhead then we had Katie Daggett in the second pepper finishing fifth Paul Maguire sixth where is everyone else? Tanya finished 7th in the bullet, and it was Ray Smith who finished 8th and last in the blockhead. That was a pretty crazy race altogether. I'm not gonna lie, but I did manage to waltz away with victory. And now, I'm going to move on to race number 2, where I will probably get my replay. But nonetheless, there we are. First race is down, and we still have two races to go. So, there we are. So for winning, we get another grand, and we have unlocked Bunker Hill Havoc. And in the end of that, we get a measly $74 as a result of the damages we caused. I'm okay with that. Anyway. One race down, two races to go, as we have now got Brad's Super Dust Up. Where we are now doing five laps around our next course. Here's to hoping we can do well.
I also just had a little yawn. But anyway, here we go. Race 2 of Episode 2. And it takes place once again in the... Quarry. I believe is what this is. The information about this game overall regarding its events... It's actually quite linear. And I did try to see if there was any useful information I could find, but... Aside from me looking on a Steam community page, there wasn't really much else in terms of useful information that I could really find about the events. Unless anyone would care to give me a description of the events in the description, then, you know. It would be appreciative if you did. But either way, we still have another four laps to go before the day is done. And I am positive in saying that we can get back to the front. Because that is what we do. I kind of knew this adventure was... I kind of knew this was going to be an adventure and a half as I almost collide with the tyres there. I probably should have went into the fence there, then I would have got some extra money, and I run straight through the fence. Not what I wanted to do. But it's okay, because we still have another three laps to win the race, as I run into Seth as we head into turn one. And now, up into fifth. I am closing in on the leaders. I think Fran I think Frank is the one driving the black and yellow grinder who's ahead of me. And now he's not, because I went for the sneak up the inside. And as a result, I got the spot. And now, we just have... One guy ahead of us. I think it's one of the blockers that's ahead of us, if I'm not mistaken. But, we'll wait and see. But anyway, there we go. I force my way up the inside for the win, because that's more or less what you have to do. The AI can get aggressive from time to time, and you do have to make sure that you can retaliate, because that's more or less what this game is designed to do. I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm just going along with whatever the game expects me to do. And this is more or less what I believe the game is expecting me to do. Basically racing the AI about as hard as they would race me. More or less. But anyway. I think out of all the races I've done so far, this one has definitely proven to be the longest. Even though we've only done four races up to this point, and this is only the fifth that we're now doing. But either way, I'd say we're doing pretty good. So, off the final corner, getting some boost, and crossing the line at about almost 135. And, oh, it was the bullet I beat. Okay. So Tanya finishes second, then we had 
Ray finishing third in the first of the two blockheads, followed by Sue fourth, Katie fifth, Paul finished in sixth. Where is the rest of the field? There they are. Frank in seventh, and Seth, who finished third in the previous race, finishes eighth in this race. What a remarkable turn of events. Anyway. Oh yeah, I technically did get a push start because I kind of missed it there on the launch. But nonetheless, I still wheeled my car to an easy win. I guess part of the reason for that is because I have the uh, normal handling physics, not the professional handling physics. But, in all honesty, I don't really mind that. Because I do just want to more or less make this about as stress-free as I possibly can. Especially since these next few weeks will probably be some of my busiest yet in terms of the work I have to do. So that's why I am trying to more or less get part of this game out of the way. And so far, it appears to be working well. Even though the grinder doesn't really look too hot at the moment. But nonetheless, I'll find a way to make my clickbait shots work if I can. I may have to go with close-ups, but I think I can make this work, even if it's not much. I'll find a way. I normally do. But anyway, yeah. So, gonna record up to the end of this lap, and then I think we should be good. Okay, I think that should cover it. So there we go. Two races down, and still one race to go in part two of the bronze events. I'm also getting a little tired. But anyway, there we go. As we have now unlocked Fairgrass Run. And in the end of that, a bonus of $121 as a result of us smashing into things. I'm okay with that. Anyway. So, two races down, one race to go. As we have Woodland Mayhem. This might take a bit longer to get through like the previous one did. Either that or I'll probably just have to subject myself to doing some grinding so I can get stronger upgrades, if you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, yeah. So, you know. I'll think of something I normally do. Anyway, here we go. Time now for... Woodland Mayhem. As we are already rubbing fenders from the start. Okay, trying again. Because that's what I have to do. Trying again with 
race six of the bronze events. But either way, here we go. And immediately, I total my car as well as myself. On. Get out the telephone pole, damn it. Well, that worked out very poorly. Oh well. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens next. As I get caught up in a melee. And I think the other guy who was involved in that wreck also reset. But no matter, because I am still within arm's reach of racing for the lead as long as I don't get forced into the guardrail and I don't so I am right behind the blocker and Oh, okay. I think that was the bullet I just overtook there. But anyway. On now to the final lap. And where I am hopeful in saying that this time around, I'll be able to put together a run that is less fucking humiliating. But we'll wait and see. But anyway. I'm right behind the leader in the blockhead. And up the inside. Am I gonna win second try? Yes I do. And I wreck myself right at the end. Okay, that's a win. And I did it by a second over Ray, and it was Frank who finished in third. Seth fourth, Paul fifth, Katie sixth, Tanya seventh, and Sue finished in eighth. Alrighty. So there we go. That's now part two of the bronze events done and dusted. And all that's really left for us to do now is the final part of the bronze events. And then we should be good. As we have now unlocked Bunker Challenge. And we've got a total of $88 in the end of that. So that's our th so that's our second row of events now done and dusted. And I'm going to earn a bit more money before getting on with these events. Because I'm convinced in saying I'll need some more money. But anyway... Let's now look at our stats. We are now 16% complete and we've now collected nearly 12 grand in our purse and we have now driven up to 58 kilometers in terms of kilometers driven. So, 
part two is down, and then once I've earned some more money, we will get on with part three of the bronze events. Coming in the next episode of Flat Out One. You love the rush, you don't slam it shut. You in the mall.